This is Street Testimonies Part 30, titled Air Force. Well, I'll tell you this morning, I sought the Lord um, early before I went to work and just asked him uh, for a divine appointment. I asked him to use me. I asked him just to put somebody in front of me who I haven't got to share his gospel with yet. And I will tell you, up until this moment, I've been working for the Air Force now for uh, two months this month, and I've got to share Jesus with a lot of people, but not like the full gospel, getting to pray with people. And it seems like there's a lot of hard hearts where I'm working at praying for God to soften them. I think one of the greatest things that I struggle with at my current workplace is, is how much Jesus's name is blasphemed and disrespected and dishonored, right? We know like the word of the Lord says, right? His law says, right? Ten commandments, right? Shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, right? And it says he will not hold him guiltless who uses his name in vain. And so I, I could tell you every single day at work, I I hear it from everybody, from management to everybody at the bottom. And so it's it's sad. Nonetheless, um, I'm just asking God, Lord, please grant me opportunities. Please help me to share. And so today I was at the gym and I there was this man there. I thought that he was somebody who was emailing me previously before going to the gym about some other stuff. And so I was like, hey, are you so-and-so? He said, no, I'm not. I'm Lieutenant so-and-so. And so I sit there and we spark up a conversation and I said, hey, man, I'm new. I said, I'm just trying to get to know everybody and, you know, shake people's hands and just introduce myself. And, and I'm happy to be here. I'm excited to be here. I said, I don't know necessarily what the Lord has in store for me yet, but, but I'm here. And uh, he's like, well, where'd you come from? And I shared with him about, you know, being at NASA, which is only 15, 20 minutes away down the hill from the, the base I'm at right now. And, uh, and I said, you know, I used to work there for almost nine years and he just was blown away. And then he shows me on his forearm, he just got a tattoo of, of a, of a, a space shuttle and, and with the solid rocket boosters on the side, right? And just, it, it looked like it was taking off on his arm. And he's just like, man, I love space. I love NASA. He's like, that's like where he wants to work. And so it really sparked his interest to know. And so I pulled out my phone, shared with him some cool videos and cool pictures of being in, at Kennedy Space Center and, and being on the pad with Artemis One and just working in all these different places. And God Bless it. He used me there to share his gospel, to see people come to Christ. It's a beautiful thing. That's in another testimonial video, by the way. But the point is, is so it opened up the door. And as I'm talking with this lieutenant, I just asked him because every time I would say something about something that God allowed me to do, he would use Jesus's name to express like, oh, wow, he would use Jesus's name. And so at one point, um, he's just like, man, you know, and I said, man, to tell you the truth, I don't have a degree. I said, I don't have any pedigree. I said, the one whose name you continue to use, I said, I use it a little bit differently and I, I use it to bring praise and glory to him because the only reason I worked there, the only reason the opportunity was there uh, was because of him. And then I shared my testimony. I said, just a couple weeks ago, I'm 12 years clean, 12 years free from alcohol and, and drugs and porn addiction and cheating on my wife and wanting to kill people for money and homelessness and just all of everything that I was living, I was completely dead in my sins. And and Jesus brought me to life. He made me a new man and, and forgave me and truly set me free from myself, from my sin, from his coming wrath. Like I, I'm a new creature today, 12 years later. And he couldn't believe it, right? He's looking at me saying, there's no way. And I just shared with him, I said, God put me there. He allowed me to be there and that to be a witness for him and an example and to testify um, of him, of his gospel, of his word, of his goodness. And so it just opened up the door. And so I'm sharing with him. And then when I get done sharing, I actually went through obviously the full gospel, the death of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ on the cross, uh, his burial, his resurrection, and what it means, the importance of it, right? And how he's set in our place. I said, so many people want to try to back off and act like they had nothing to do with the cross. And it's like, Jesus went to the cross because of us. The Bible says in Romans 4.25 that he was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. So Jesus went to that cross because of us guys. Like there's no getting around it. Because of our sin, he was nailed to that cross and God poured out all of his righteous judgment and anger upon his son, Jesus, instead of pouring it out on us, right? So Jesus steps in our place in the path of God's wrath, drinks the cup, right? And lets us go free, right? He dies, he's risen from the grave three days later and he calls all men everywhere to repent of their sins and to believe in him so that they might be saved. So shared testimony of where I was, how I was in the, in the darkness, now I'm in the light. I was lost, now I'm found, I was dead, but now I'm alive. Shared with him about the grace of God, shared with him the goodness of God and sending his son, the full gospel. And then so when I got done fin when I got done sharing, I just asked him, I said, so, so where are you at 
with Christ? And he says, man, that's a good question. He says, well, he says, I used to follow him. I used to walk with him. And he said, um, he says, I, to tell you the truth, he says, uh, it's a, it's a really, really bad excuse. He says, but it's an excuse. He said, I don't know how to, you can't sugarcoat it. He says, I just, I got too busy. And so it seemed like, you know, what went away in my life wasn't the stuff that don't matter. It's the stuff that do matter. He said, so I, you know, I, I'm in the military. I got so much going on here. I just got married. I, you know, have a baby on the way. And I just kind of, God took the back seat. Now God's not even in the car anymore. And so I'm listening to him and I'm just like, man, right. And I totally get it, right. So many people will put so many things uh, before God, right. And then they will make excuses. We, we all do. We all make excuses why we can't read our Bibles, why we can't pray, why we can't share with other people, why we can't go out and evangelize, why we can't go to church, why we can't, why we can't. We got all of these reasons and excuses why we can't do all of these things. But if it's truly a priority to us, which it should be, we will make it happen. We will do what needs to happen to do it. Just like every day we go to work to get a paycheck. It's like we're there early. We'll stay late. We'll work overtime. We'll work weekends if we have to because that paycheck, that paycheck, that paycheck. It's like, well, Jesus is better than a paycheck. So anyways, he shares this with me. And just so you know, Jesus says, if you put anybody before me, you're not worthy of me, right? So Jesus must sit on the throne of our heart, nothing else. Anyways, so he shares this with me. And then an analogy came to my mind. And I said, my friend, how many funerals have you ever been to? And he says, well, not very many. He says, but my wife, we've been going to a lot of funerals for her. And I said, man, I'm willing to bet if you go home and ask her if she has any regret for any of her close family members that have recently passed, excuse me, if, if she has any regret. And what I mean by that is, man, I wish I would have called him. I wish I would have talked to him. I wish I would have, you know, reached out to him or visited him one more time to, to let him know how I feel or to, to tell him that I love him or whatever it is, right? And I said, and now the opportunity's gone. It's all lost. And I said, now that person's inside the, the casket and you can't just go shake their shoulders and say, come on, get up. Let me tell you one more time what you mean to me, what you mean to me and, and you know, whatever, whatever, catch up on lost times or let go whatever needed to be let go or forgive or whatever it is, Right. And I said, and we stand there in regret. I've seen it at every funeral. I've done plenty of funerals where people stand in regret because they wish they wish they would have did something differently with their time than what they did with their time. And I said, man, I said, could you imagine one day standing before God in his very presence and sitting back and thinking like God has given me 33 years of life. And it's like, man, God, I wish I would have made you a priority. I wish I'd have read my Bible. I wish I would have prayed. I wish I would have fellowship with your body. I wish I would have, I wish I would have sought you and told more people about you. I wish I would have taught my children and my wife. And I, I wish I would have done what you told me. To, and I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish, and all these things. And just like at the funeral, just like now, it's too late. It's too late to get right. It's too late to say what needs to be said or do what needs to be do, done. It's, it's too late. And he's just like, man, he says, I get it. I understand. He says, dude, I needed this. I needed to get put back on track. And he says, this is what I needed. And then before I asked him if I could pray with him, and I asked the Lord uh, to please draw him to himself and to please save him and to give him a hunger and a thirst for his word and a hunger and a thirst to follow him and to make him a priority. Um, and I don't know what it means. Only God does, right? But, but before I walked out of the, the gym, he just said, hey, man, he says, uh, I just wanted to tell you, he says, I, I can't really say why I really needed this, but I really, really needed this. Um, thanks for talking with me. And so what I thought was just, a, hey, you know, reaching out a greeting type of thing. It's like God set up for a full blown divine appointment. And it was just it was awesome. I was just, I was just rejoicing. I was like, this is why I'm here. I'm here to glorify God. I'm here to bring praise to his name. I'm here to share Jesus with everybody that I work with. I'm there to be an example in my work ethic and what, how I walk and talk and what I say and what I do, right? All of it. It's all for Jesus. And I'm just so very thankful. This is really my first, first big testimony from my new job. And I was kind of like, man, God, like I've been getting to share with a lot of people, but it's kind of like not really maybe gone anywhere, at least that I know, right? The word of the Lord never returns void, but I was just, I was just excited today. I asked God this morning before I left on my knees, I said, God, please give me a divine appointment. Please put somebody in my path. Please let me share you with them. Please let me bring glory to your name, please. <laughs> and he answered and he gave me, he gave me a divine appointment. So awesome. So 
I thank God and I will be praying for that man. And um, I pray that that this is really what he needed to get right back on track with the Lord Jesus and to come back like the prodigal, to come home, to be accepted back into the kingdom and, uh, and to follow the Lord and be ready for his soon coming. So praise God. Street Testimonies Part 30, Air Force.